This is the 2023 Honda Ridgeline. Is it the most underrated midsize truck? We're going to try and answer that question in today's Vehicle Visionary video with this RTLE trim level Ridgeline that I borrowed from my friends here at Holmes Honda in Shreveport, Louisiana. And there are multiple trim levels to choose from. This is the next to highest or second from the highest. It goes Sport, RTL, RTLE, and then Black Edition. And this truck does definitely have a lot of features that you won't see on other trucks. And as is the case with any vehicle, are there things that could improve? Absolutely. One of the things we're waiting to find out is, is Honda going to fully redesign the Ridgeline for the 2024 model year? There has been no information given on that, but being the full redesign of the Pilot came out for 2023, it makes sense that the Ridgeline would follow suit for the 2024 model year. I really believe it should have been for the 2023 model year. But one big advantage you have here over other trucks is that this truck as of 2021 comes standard all wheel drive. So if you live in an area where it snows a lot, this is a good truck to have for that kind of thing. It can handle the snow well, it, it has a snow mode and quite a few other features. Let's dig in and see exactly what those features are. If it's been a couple of years since you've looked at the Ridgeline, as of 2021, not only is front wheel drive gone and all wheel drive standard, you also have the more squared off front end. I really would be interested to see what this truck would look like as being fully redesigned. It's gonna likely look just like the Pilot, but we'll see what happens with that as far as the 2023 Pilot goes. And here at the front end, we're going to find the chrome brow across the top. There's a lot of chrome on a vehicle around multiple places, depending on if you like chrome or not. Well, that could be a good thing. We're going to have the LED headlights, the LED fog lights. We also have the auto high beams. And I mentioned the fact that this truck is standard all wheel drive. So what about tire and wheel size? We're going to have 245 on our width, the 60 series sidewall right here wrapped around an 18 inch wheel. We're also going to have the body colored mirror caps. The turn signal indicator is built in. You will have Honda sensing here. So that means that in addition to the blind spot information system, you're also going to have adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, road departure mitigation. All of that's going to be there. What about the remote? There is what it looks like. You're going to have the remote start feature right there. I know a lot of you like to know about that. It is a very nice convenience. And here is more of that chrome that I was talking about, not only with the surround on the windows, but also down there on the door handles. You do have the walk away feature if you wish to use that. And finishing things off here on the rear with the chrome tip exhaust, we're going to be able to tow up to 5,000 pounds. And I'm curious to know, if you have towed with your Ridgeline, tell me what the experience has been like. Roughly, how much have you been able to pull, maybe up to 5,000 pounds, and what has it been like getting up to highway speed? So what motivates the Ridgeline to get down the road or down the trail or wherever it may go? Well, it's the 3.5 liter Honda V6. Now, this isn't the updated version that's in the Pilot as of right now, but there's not a big difference. 280 horsepower compared to the 285 of the 23 Pilot. The torque numbers do remain the same with both numbers at 262 pound-feet. This truck does have the 9-speed automatic transmission compared to the 10-speed of the 23 Pilot. And what about those all important MPGs? Well, let's take a look at exactly what they are. 18 city, 24 highway, 21 combined. And Honda says you should use 4.8 gallons of gas for every 100 miles you drive. And what size is the gas tank that does have capitalist fuel fill, by the way? This is a 19 and a half gallon gas tank. And obviously you don't have as long of a bed as you would on a lot of other trucks, but here on the Ridgeline, not necessarily a big deal. But what is a big deal is the way the bed ultimately works. Now you do have the tailgate that folds down in the conventional manner, so it can use, be used as any other truck can. But one thing that I think would be useful on other mid-sized trucks or any truck period is the fact that you can swing the tailgate open like this. There are a lot of advantages in that respect. It makes it easier to gain access to the bed area right here. You do have the built-in lighting. There are four tie downs 
and two in the front two in the rear on both sides so you have a total of eight and then on some of these trucks you do have the built-in audio and let's see here let's open things up and see what we have in this area you have a little bit of storage right here and the advantage of a power outlet so in a lot of ways this truck is really the ultimate tailgating truck and it doesn't stop there uh, you have a payload capacity of up to 1,583 pounds. So depending on what you want to haul back here, well, that can be useful in a multitude of ways. But if you aren't familiar with the ridge lines, here's something you may not know about and may find interesting. You'll notice the lock right here. What exactly is it you are locking if you use that lock? It's the bed trunk. And the bed trunk has a lot of capabilities. It can be used for storage. You can also have partitions that go in these three areas right here to partition it off. And you could fill this area with ice. You can put drinks in here, snacks in different areas, and just kind of set things up however you want. And when the ice melts down and you're ready to get rid of the water, you're going to take the drain plug out right there and everything just drains out neatly. There's a lot of potential uses for this area. And then you do have the tray right here that comes out for gaining access to the spare tire and the tools to change that tire. And you have the tray bolts right here, one on each side. I'm gonna just pull one out because I do wanna make a point. If you ever need to take these out, when you put them back in, make sure they're just finger tight. You don't need to torque them down to any high specification because if you do, eventually one day, you're probably gonna to need to gain access to this area again and you don't need to over tighten that because it will be a nightmare to get them loose again and you can use this area for cleaning off boots at the end of a dirty or a day of, of being out in the mud dirty clothes or whatever you have back here you can spray all of that off right here and get it clean this truck has a lot of uses not only for off-roading some light off-roading getting out in the sand whatever the case is out in the woods it can also be a multi-use work truck in a multitude of ways a lot of people don't think about that but that is a very good option with the ridge line another area that is multi-use would be the back seat now get your head out of the gutter now don't think that no door bins right here but that is partially made up with the built-in drink holder right here a little bit of storage space for snacks and whatever the case is right there comfortable with the armrest and the reason i say this is a multi-use area is because of the fact that you can fold the seat cushions up as you can see right there that makes a difference you can use this rear area for a multitude of different options including if you have something you need to keep in and out of the rain. If it's raining outside, you're gonna be in good shape. You will find the dual air conditioning vents back here as well as the dual USB ports. Now, the one thing that's missing that maybe we'll see in 2024, we'll see, we're just gonna have to wait and find out. There is not a panoramic sunroof. You have the conventional size sunroof, but I don't know how many people are really too concerned about such a thing. And then if those drink holders in the door panels are not enough, you also have the fold down armrest right here with the drink holders built in, a little bit of a nook back there for snacks. But the thing I really like here is the fact that even if you have two drinks back here or your rear seat passengers have two drinks in here, you can still use this area as an armrest because the drink holders are not up in this area where basically it eliminates the ability to use as an armrest if there are drinks in that area also have the power sliding rear window taking a look in through the passenger side door we're going to have the upper and the lower door bins so for the door bin snobs in your life tell them to call shotgun for the most part we're going to see the same things we saw in the, the rear door with the door panels there you do have the heated only here in the united states power seats for the driver and the passenger if you live in canada well, you get to have ventilated seats eh yeah, I don't know why we don't have that yet in the U.S. We'll see again what comes for the 2024 model here. Here is the nice large glove box without gloves in it, but it does have the wheel lock key in here if you need to change your wheels or change your tires, I should say. 
or wheels for that matter. Well, you can take advantage of that. That's what you'll need. And we have quite a bit here in the way of connectivity as far as the 12 volt and the USB. You have your wireless charging right down there, wireless charging pad, and the often controversial push button shifter. Some people like it, some people don't. Tell me which person you are. And then the built-in armrests for the front seats you can see that you can adjust those a multitude of different ways let me get this one out of the way and we'll take a look at the garage door style lid or door maybe that's more of a door than a lid we call it a, a door for the center console and when you get into the center console guess what more connectivity so quite a few connectivity options with usb and 12 volt capabilities and a lot of space within the interior of the center console. We'll go right here, take a look at the vanity mirror with the lights built in. And how far back does this slide? The visor, sun visor, actually slides back pretty far. You'd have to be sitting way back here for that to be an issue. <clears throat> it will block out the sun in a very good way and if rear seat passengers are being unruly you can give them the evil eyes or if they're being good you can give them the kind eyes i don't know whichever it is that doubles as a sunglass holder one of the many multitaskers within the confines of the ridgeline and here are the controls not only for the power sunroof but also for that power rear window and as we take a look in through the driver's side door Pretty much the same setup with the exception of a few more accessories. Controls for all the windows, locks, window locks, all that good stuff. Here's the button for opening that gas door that stays locked until you push that button. So that is an advantage right there, a little peace of mind. And one thing that I really would like to see on the driver and the passenger side at this price point, seat memory. Only here on the driver's side that you have a couple of options there. Here are the controls for those power side view mirrors. You can go in or out of econ mode right there and some of the safety features available to turn on and off right there. This is the lever that you can drop and change the positioning of the steering wheel tilt and telescopically depending on what you want to adjust to make sure you're comfortable as the driver and here's what we have with the 2023 version of the ridgeline at least as far as the instrument cluster goes a pretty simple system to use but definitely effective going to get the job done got the digital speedometer up there at the top and we do have the paddle shifters for working your way through that nine speed automatic transmission if so desired and we're going to have the steering wheel mounted controls here as well and one thing there's a lot of questions that people often ask and one of them is does it have built-in navigation in this particular case yes it does as you can see but let's take a look at what else we have here we're going to go to the main screen as far as this goes you can see everything that you have there you do have the truck bed audio by the way i told you about that earlier you can use that if you so desire and one thing that's interesting here as well this isn't all we have so we're going to scroll back here right there we're going to push on that let's see if i can get that to work there we go just my inexperience it's not that there's anything wrong with it but you can see the apps that you have here with the browser the calendar download you can see what all is there pretty simple to deal with and simple to use very simple to learn as well by the way for those who maybe haven't had this kind of technology before and we'll go into reverse and take a look at the multi-view rear view camera you do have three different views as you can see if you need to back up to a trailer to haul that up to 5,000 pounds well there is the ultimate hitch view well, ultimately that's what it is you can also use that a few different ways it doesn't just have to be for the hitch view and something else that came back for 2021 that's worth pointing out is going to be the knob right here to control the functionality of the radio turning it on and off and the volume apparently a lot of you ask for that and so that's what happened and one thing that definitely makes the ridgeline a bit different from other trucks that it competes with as far as mid-sized trucks go is the fact that it has the independent rear suspension it gives it a little bit better ride quality what exactly is it like to drive this truck let's hop out on the road and we'll find out all right we're out for our test drive and one thing i wanted to do is get out on a road that would give a good road test noise because it's a very rough road very much washboarded out 
it's going to be a little exaggerated, but at least it'll give you a really good idea of the interior noise when driving out on the road. And most roads are not this bad. I'll be doing 65 miles per hour, and I'll let you listen in both lanes for just a few seconds per lane. As far as I'm concerned, you can't really tell a difference between the two lanes, but I've had people request that anyway. Just for the heck of it, I figured I would oblige the request. So this road is really bad. I've driven it in a lot of different vehicles, and so to not hear much road noise here is actually pretty impressive. It's not bad from my vantage point, and I know there are people out there who are going to say, oh, you need a decibel meter to measure that. No, actually you don't. That's really useless unless you're doing a scientific experiment because different people are going to have different opinions as to what is acceptable and what is not. So the decibel meter can't really tell you that. It just gives you a number. Overall, the ride quality is good here. I, again, driving this road as much as I do, I can tell you that this ridge line is soaking up the bumps nicely on what can be a very unenjoyable and rough experience. It's not bad here in this truck. I don't have any weight in the bed, nothing on the tray or on the bumper that I'm pulling. So there's no extra weight to help out in any way, shape and form where that kind of thing is concerned. And the good thing about the Ridgeline is that you don't really have to floor it to get it to move. You just ease into the pedal. It's going to do just fine in getting you down the road and getting you wherever you need to go. The seats themselves are comfortable. I would test out the heated seat function today, but it's a little bit warm for that heading into the mid to high 80s today. I think the high is going to be around 85 today. It's just too warm to do that today, but it is what it is. You'll just have to try it for yourself sometime and see if that works for you or if it doesn't. But as of right now, I'm just enjoying everything as it is. It's nice and comfortable in here. And this truck has a good turning radius for what it is for its size. It's pretty nimble. It'd be good for getting around in the big city, a little bit smaller than a full-size truck, obviously. So that's going to have its advantages where that kind of thing is concerned. And like I said earlier, even though going from, from this infotainment screen to the updated version, the technology looks different, but it's still just as easy to learn and use. So if this sticks around for 2024, which is going to be a big surprise if it does, regardless, easy technology to learn and use once you've learned it. So for those who may be saying, I haven't traded my truck in since 1990, and you're saying that technology that's in these vehicles these days is, is really kind of scaring me off for the time being, don't be scared of it. Very easy to learn and use, like I say. So ultimately, there's a lot that this truck has going for it why so many people don't like it, I don't know. I know there's a lot of people who do, but people talk about how it's not really a truck. And that mainly comes down to the fact that it's unibody and you can't raise it up. You can't do anything like that. You can't put a, a lift kit on it or anything like that. But other than that, I mean, it's pretty much your basic truck. Uh, could it use more horsepower? Could it use a, a hybrid powertrain? Well, according to a lot of people, yes. That is the most commonly requested thing. When I say, what would you like to see Honda add to the Ridgeline in the future? People want a hybrid powertrain. I find that very interesting. So now that we've taken a fairly in-depth tour of the 2023 Honda Ridgeline RTLE, is it the most underrated mid-sized truck? Well, the main thing you need to do to answer that question is read the comments because owners will tell you what the answer to that question is. Maybe you're considering buying one of these trucks or looking at mid-sized trucks and trying to figure out which one may be best. Should you wait for 2024 to buy a Ridgeline? Well, since we don't really know at this point what's coming, you may want to go ahead and pick one up now because there are quite a few still available, obviously, on Honda lots for the 2023 model year, but it will be interesting to see what comes for 2024. I don't think it would be a wise idea if Honda does not redesign a Ridgeline for the 2024 model year, but you know what? I'm not the one in charge, so my opinion doesn't really matter. Either way, I have to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda 
for loaning me this ridgeline for the day. And a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.